Am I 100% sure there isn't a fruit fly in my coffee? No. Is that gonna stop me from drinking it? Also no. Hello everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skeleton? Busket. Happy 300k! I haven't had the chance to really acknowledge that during a video um, because the last few videos have been pre-recorded. So thank you for uh, saying that you wanted to see my face more than once. I really appreciate it. I don't feel like I get the chance to say this enough, but I do really appreciate everyone that watches uh, the videos and, and like them and give my- I gotta say that too. My comment section has been peak the last few videos. Hilarious. Honestly, that's my favorite part of YouTube in general is the comment section, but particularly if we're talking about like some super funny stuff, hilarious. Last few videos, peak stuff. Also, I do have a little bit of, I'm gonna try not to cry. Well, a few days ago, my baby passed away, Herbert the Fly. Um, For those of you that don't know who Herbert the Fly is, it was a fly that lived in this room for like a month. I don't know how he survived for that long, but he did pass away. Now there is another fly in here, but I think it's his cousin or something. And it's just not the same. We had a lot of times. We had a lot of laughs. And um, I'm gonna miss you, little buddy. So today's video, today's Saturday, it's movie night. It's bad movies in a beat day. For those of you that don't know what that is, for the last three weeks, I've been having a lot of fun talking about really bad movies <laughs> while doing my makeup. It's been, like I said, them comment section. Last week we talked about Tommy Wiseau's The Room, often referred to as critically the worst movie ever made. It was a very hilarious and infuriating watch, I must say. So if you haven't seen that, then you can see it in the playlist because now there's three whole videos in this series. I'm, I'm churning them out. So today we're doing quite easily the most highly requested video, a uh, movie in this series thus far. Everybody in their mama was like, oh, you're doing videos about bad movies? Well, girl, have you seen Sierra Burgess? Burgess? Burgess is a loser. This is a 2018 film. It came out around this time last year. And I must say, at the time, I don't think I had Netflix. So <laughs> I wasn't really like keeping an eye on what Netflix films were coming out. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know the controversy around this movie. Actually, I had never heard of the title until I started doing this series. So everybody was like, girl, please, we wanna know what your opinions on this movie is. And I think it's good in the sense that I went into this completely blind, like I didn't know what other people thought of the movie. So it was cool to like sit down and watch it and be like, this is my organic response to this film. Our titular character is Sierra Burgess, who is a teenager, as as they tend to be in these type movies. She's kind of dorky, kind of geeky, you know, certainly wouldn't be considered one of the popular crowd. She's the daughter of like a motivational speaker mom or something who does really crappy slogans and for surviving life's trials and self-esteem and all that. And then her dad is the most annoying person. <laughs> he is the most peak annoying person because he's an author. All he does is quote other people's stuff. Dreams are the bright creatures of poem and legend who sport on earth in the night season and melt away in the first beam of the sun. Who does that? Who just sits there and quotes like these long drawn out pieces of poetry from other authors, like what did you make? But apparently he's supposed to be famous for his work, but again, we never hear it. But beyond that, who talks like that? I don't know, I just found him incredibly annoying. Like I said, at school, Sierra isn't particularly popular, but she is a very um, adequate student, I guess I should say. Does very well on tests. She seems to be a very smart student. Uh, she has a black friend because they always do. Uh, this time, instead of our tall girl inspirational quote saying female character, we have a dude that does it. But I guess he's supposed to be a little bit of like a contrast to Sierra's just overall, how should I put this, buzzkillness? Like she just, <laughs> she just seems so flat as a person. This kind of like vague superiority. Won't you sell more books if you have the one teenager who doesn't obsess over looks? I'm not like these other people. I don't care about my looks and it's like, Okay, 
whereas he's just very, very playful, downright annoying, to be honest with you. Another routinized cliche is that we have to have our three mean girl trio, who is gonna be the bully and, you know, the pretty girls that make our main protagonist just hate her life, or at least try to. That is, in this case, Veronica, the most beautiful, popular head cheerleader, of course, because of course she is. Supposed to be our main antagonist, I guess, or like the, the most, visible person that's supposed to be our antagonist at least initially i will say i didn't like the way she was written for the first like half of the movie kind of cartoonish even as an antagonist like aggressively ridiculing sierra move it Berto, before you break the mirror and that's just not realistic girls don't fight like that usually <laughs> especially in high school it's all about passive aggression oh you wore that okay <laughs> not saying that all bullies are particularly artful in their way of bullying, but I'm just saying girls don't usually do that. From my experience, uh, girls don't really bully like that. We're a lot more likely to like go online or talk about you behind your back. <laughs> it's more subtle, it's more artful. Frodo is from Lord of the Rings. You're thinking of Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame. He's ridiculed for his appearance and represents a stratified class, not unlike the structure of our own high school popularity. Like this scene is so weird because one, if this was really happening, those popular girls in the background would not be laughing. They'd be looking at her like, wow, what a freaking geek. Like, <laughs> but again, this like weird superiority complex that is Sierra Burgess. I was just like, oh, okay. I don't like her. Like, I don't like the bully either, but like she's, she's annoying. Like she's supposed to be the main character. And I just found myself not liking her like from the jump, I was like, ugh. Fast forward, Victoria is at like a restaurant and she gets hit on by Jamie, who is played by um, Noah Centenegro. Sorry, I never call him by his right name. I don't know why. Comes up to her and he's like, oh, can I have your number? Doesn't want to talk to him because she thinks his friends are losers, therefore he must be a loser and therefore not worth talking to, which, how do I put this? I don't know where y'all from and what your school climate was like, but regardless of who his friends is, if a Noah Centaur looking dude came up to me and was like, can I have your number? And he's friends with some geeks, that's all the better. I don't know what fake world they living in where they want me as an audience participant to be like, yup, that's realistic. No one would ever want to talk to Noah Centinopolis because that's what happens in real life. But whatever. Anyway, to curve Jamie, she ends up giving him Sierra's number. Sierra had posted her number to a bulletin board in school that she wanted to tutor people so that she can pay for, for a new car. It takes the number. She's like, I'm going to give it to this random dude because... <laughs> Here's how I get back at Sierra. This is how I sufficiently bully Sierra. I send her a smoking hot guy. <laughs> she is stupid. Anyway, I'm gonna send her this smoking hot guy and he's gonna think it's me and it's gonna be ha 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 ha. Fast forward and Sierra starts talking to this mystery guy. And spoiler alert, they end up really liking each other. Who would have saw that coming? Not I. But eventually she finds out that he thinks that he's talking to Victoria. So here we have a dilemma. And how she decides to solve this dilemma is going to her bully and saying, hey, you're dumb. Hey, I'm horny. So let's help each other out. <laughs> Basically, I will tutor you to help you not fail things. Attracted to some guy that is in college, so she wants to look smarter for him. So she's like, hey, you're dumb. Let me help you and you can help me continue to catfish this guy into thinking that I'm you. Perfect plan, great plan, wonderful plan. So Sierra and Veronica start to become friends and Veronica wants to help her keep fooling this dude. It was around this time that I started to realize that uh, Sierra isn't just annoying, she's like a bad person. <laughs> like, she's a genuinely bad person. Cause let me just say, up until around this part, I wasn't getting what was so bad about the movie. Yeah, it's kind of corny. Yeah, we got the the black sidekick as usual. Oh my God, it that like listening to them talk on the phone, almost turned it off there. I was like, ooh, 
it didn't get really bad until a few scenes after veronica and sierra have started to become friends where veronica's acting like she's sierra and they're out on a date and basically jamie's going in for a kiss he wants to kiss her and what they do is they tell him to close his eyes it's so creepy man close his eyes and then sierra comes out from out of hiding and she kisses him instead of Veronica so he thinks he's kissing Veronica but he's kissing Sierra and that my friends is when it clicked in for me I was like oh that's why y'all hate this movie that's one of the many reasons why y'all hate this movie I will say this was the first part that truly truly pissed me off I was like so not only uh first of all if you're not if you're not understanding this is sexual assault he was not trying to kiss this person and she's like you know what i want to kiss him and i'm not like other girls so he's kissing this chick thinking it's somebody else and they play this freaking music and it pisses me off like i'm supposed to be in the audience thinking like oh my god that's so cute she finally got to be no <laughs> this is horrible and then afterwards she over there like oh my god it was so amazing like the kiss was so, oh my god he was like no the kind of kiss you read about in books but never believe could actually happen you sexually assaulted him <laughs> this is not cute if you ended up kissing somebody that you were not trying to kiss because they tricked you that is sexual assault <laughs> nobody thought that was like a creepy thing i was like Ew, this chick is gross. And then the thing that started to piss me off is that I was like, are they justifying this behavior because she ugly? Yeah, she does a lot of crappy things. She lies to people. She lies about what she looks like, who she is. Like she lies to this dude all the time, not just about like who she is, but there even comes a part where they ended up seeing each other in person. And in an effort for him not to hear her voice, she lied and said she was deaf. Like she's an overall really trash person. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, am I supposed to be rooting for her? Like, am I supposed to be, what am I supposed to be rooting for? Because for me, as a person in the audience, I was just waiting for it to all fall apart. I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait for her to get what she deserves. Jamie ends up kissing Veronica because he thinks that's who he's been talking to this entire time. Like he's really into her. Sierra sees it. She has this weird sense of ownership and expectation for loyalty, even though she's been defrauding everyone this entire movie, but but she's ugly, so I guess that's okay. By the way, for clarification, I don't find her, I don't find her ugly. She's a very average looking person. Like I wouldn't have looked at her and be like, you know, it's like she's a very average looking person, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the feeling that you get when watching this movie. They want me to sit there and think, oh yeah, she's trash but she's had a hard life because she's ugly. Like that doesn't make an excuse for this behavior. Like it doesn't at all off the deep end. And she's like, oh my God, how could she? And so in order to get back at Veronica, I'm gonna hack into her Instagram, humiliate her by showing how the guy that she was really interested in, the whole reason she was trying to be smart, that he dumped her over DM and that's humiliating, I guess. Hacking into her account, and sharing this picture of her getting dumped to everyone in the school. It goes super public and everyone finds out that she was dumped by this guy and apparently that's a big deal. Why would that be like enough that it starts some big thing at school? I don't I don't think that's realistic, but whatever. Because apparently she was supposed to be the most hated person in school because she got dumped. It's like, that's not realistic, but okay. But yeah, it's supposed to be super embarrassing. And more importantly, it was something that was shared by Sierra. So if we're counting at home, Sierra has now sexually assaulted someone. She's catfished someone. She has now hacked into someone's account and shared personal information all over the school at this point. At this time, Jamie also finds out that all of these things are the case, that she's been lying about everything. She's not deaf. She's also the girl that he's been talking to this entire time. And he's like, I don't want nothing to do with her. And I was like, okay, great. So she's finally going to get the lesson, right? I figured, I figured the entire movie was building up to a lesson, right? You know, she's been a horrible person this entire movie. She's going to finally get the revelation that you can't do this crap. And maybe there'll be like a redemption arc and it'll be great. Girl, girl, this is what happened. Let me run down the last like 30 minutes in, in like two seconds. Basically, she cries because no one knows how hard her life is because she's ugly. 
It's easy for you to spout your self-esteem BS. But look at me. Do you have any idea what it's like to be a teenage girl and to look like this? Like, none of the things that have gone wrong for you were because you were ugly. All this stuff is because you were a trash person. She has a boo-hoo pity party. And basically, by the end of the film, she's completely and utterly forgiven, even though she never really said sorry to anyone. Like, she apologizes, but it's in, like, this weird... I apologized after you already forgave me type situations. Like what happens is she makes a crappy little song and she sends it to Veronica and Veronica forgives her without her actually saying sorry. By the way, the song too was basically like, the reason I do the things I do is because I, I'm, I'm different and I wanna be accepted. Like I want you guys to like me even though I'm like unconventional. It's like girl that has nothing to do with anything. You just gross, you're a gross person. Veronica forgives her and she forgives her enough to go to, to Jamie and is like, hey, forgive her basically. Noah comes to her house to do some grand gesture that she does not deserve to basically ask her to go to homecoming with him. And like, she eventually does say, I'm sorry, but it's kind of like after, again, after he'd already forgiven her. Like though, though Jamie comes to her house to basically say, I forgive you, the very gesture of him coming over there, he bought her a rose or a flower or whatever, kind of felt like he did something wrong and he was coming to apologize to her. It's like, no, this hoe was crazy. And it was at that moment that I truly realized the main issue with this movie. Cause everyone was like, that ending was horrible. That ending was horrible. And I was like, I get it. Because you watch this whole freaking movie and you're like, she gonna get it. She gonna get it. She gonna get it. I can't wait till she get it. She's so unlikable. But at the end, she just gets praised and forgiven and everything that she ever wanted with absolutely no consequences to the things that she did. Like literally every person in this movie is so much more likable than her, which is a shame because it really, let's talk for a second about the unconventionally attractive protagonist, right? I don't think she's really what a lot of people would consider the conventionally attractive unattractive <laughs> protagonist in these type movies, you know, because they'll make movies like this and, and try to say like so-and-so is so unattractive and they have like a whole makeover situation where they just take her glasses off and suddenly she's a bombshell you know like this girl was a little bit more representative not of like an ugly person but just like a normal person like someone that's not particularly drop dead gorgeous and i felt like there was a lot that could really be worked with there but instead you turn her into this victim victim who uses this state of being not necessarily conventionally attractive as justification, as a crutch, leeway to basically screw everyone over because I guess she's do these things because she's ugly. Like, don't nobody owe you nothing. She's owed these things because, you know, life gave her this shorthand and like, do you know how hard it is to be me because I'm, because I'm unattractive? It's like, girl. Yeah, I sexually assaulted that dude but I'm ugly. I lied about having a disability that actually affects a lot of people and makes their lives very difficult. I'm ugly and that's the only way I could get him to talk to me. Yeah, I hacked into your account and basically outed really sensitive information for you, but it's okay cause I'm ugly and you'll forgive me once I make a song about how hard it is being ugly. Not that I'm apologizing to you for doing any of these things because i'm the victim here and the thing that's kind of concerning to me is that there will be teenage girls who feel as though they're not you know conventionally attractive or whatever and they'll watch this and be like hey it worked for her <laughs> like she gets it like how hard it is to be unattractive it's like first of all you didn't even tackle that subject very well like you could actually have delved into that it was such a wasted opportunity you know to really like talk about the problems that go along with being quote unquote unattractive, whatever that means. Like we were joking about tall girl, like, oh my God, the troubles of being a tall girl. And really there there are some minor inconveniences, but it's not that bad, honestly. I'm saying as a tall girl, I'm six foot tall. But a person that is considered unattractive by whatever that means in that particular context or society or whatever, will have a pretty rough time, right? But to illustrate it, to talk about it in this way, I don't think 
that's a good message to send out to people. And now with that said, though this movie is bad, I would certainly say it's bad in a way that's particularly different than the last two movies we've talked about so far. With Tall Girl, it was bad because it just was stupid. Like it was nonsensical. <laughs> It was kind of like an infomercial movie, like it started a problem that doesn't exist just to solve it. In an effort to be relatable, it was just kind of comical. The Room was bad because it was just bad, like comically bad, like bad writing, horrible audio, nonsensical plot. You know, it was just bad technically in every way, but it was like so bad that it was good type movie. This movie is bad in a way that's quintessentially different from those two. Like it's bad, but not because like the filming was bad or even that the acting was that bad. The problem about this movie and what ultimately makes it a bad movie. The problem with this movie is more of a moral issue. We have this person that's supposed to be our main person that we're supposed to be rooting for, but instead she does all these reprehensible things and gets away with it essentially. And not just that she gets away with it, cause I don't even have a problem with that so much if it was supposed to be like a, yeah, life, life is unfair type moral. She gets away with it through the music, the, the way that it went. We as an audience are supposed to be happy. Like we felt like she had a redemption arc or something, which again, she did not have. Instead, we just have this super entitled girl who we think is gonna have this huge character development and you know be brought down a few pegs honestly instead she's rewarded with the guy she gets the friends all back she you know she goes to whatever college she wants she gets everything she wanted for simply existing she had no character development no insight she only apologizes when it's easy to do so. And if it's not easy to do so, she makes excuses for her behavior because of the, the horrible card she's been dealt as an ugly woman. You being conventionally attractive or unattractive does not give you the right to do any of the things that this person did in this movie or any similar things. Someone being attractive, unattractive, male or female does not give you the right to sexually assault them. To be honest with you, I feel like people aren't talking about that part enough. I feel like people are mad at the end for some reason. Can we really, really discuss how there are people that will justify it because A, he's a man, he's an attractive man. Keep that same energy. Don't go kissing people that did not wanna be kissed, period. Period, end of story. If he ain't wanna kiss her, if he wasn't planning on kissing her, if there was no indication that he was gonna be kissing her, it's sexual assault. If she's drop dead gorgeous, it's not okay. If she's ugly as sin, it's not okay. If I was planning on kissing somebody and I open my eyes and it's not the person I was trying to be kissing, oh, I'm throwing hands and pressing charges. So yeah. Uh, the movie's horrible, not because it's bad acting or even that the premise itself is bad. You know, like the conflict is that she wants someone to like her for her, but she looks a certain way. It's just a complete and utter waste of good stock material. Instead of it being like a flawed character that learns the errors of their ways and grows as a character throughout that, it's just someone with their head up their own ass the entire movie and they feel like they can use their lack of uh, physical appeal as an excuse to be just an all around crap person. Just a little PSA. Regardless of what you look like, what gender you are, what sexuality you are, what religion, what ethnicity, if you're a crap person, you're a crap person, okay? Don't be a crap person. Be better people every day. I think that's the thing that's really wasted is that it could have been a really good like turnaround for a person, but instead it's just her victimizing herself the entire movie and saying that it's justified because these are the cards she was dealt in life as a ugly high schooler girl. Shut the hell up. That's all for today. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. I don't know why I said it like that, Kenny JD. If you have any other really bad movies that you check out, be sure to let me know. Um, I've been really interested in the films that you guys recommend because apparently I, I don't know all of the bad movies that are out there and that is truly and utterly a shame because if nothing else, they are entertaining. And I will see you guys next Tuesday.